Right there is the proposed new constitution. Today's the big day. The assembly is going to look at it. At least I hope they do. I don't even know if they have enough signatures to take it up. This is the culmination of Anton's presidency. I, I, everything he wants to do, weaken the power of the executive, uh, change the election threshold so that the people in the legislature finally represent the people. They finally resemble the people as the people can elect who they want and not have a minority rule over the majority. I don't know that the odds look very good, though. If we break things down... Uh, let's see. The NFP, the Reds here, they're not going to vote for us. That's the hard righties. They're not going to vote for us. The independents, I don't know where they're going to vote. I wish we could have seen Monsoon Leaky, their leader, and try to convince him. The light blues here, they're probably all going to vote for us. That's the PIF just Friends Richter's party. Friends Richter said that they're going to vote for us. Um, so the big problem is our party. And the reformists in our party under Clavin are going to vote for us. The problem is the conservatives under Gloria Tory almost assuredly aren't, and I have no idea what the moderates are going to do. I feel like this is a long shot, but it's it's worth fighting for. This might go horribly. Assembly vote on the constitutional changes. Presidential state car rode to the Grand National Assembly. Serge was driving me towards the Grand National Assembly for today's historic vote. It was a big day. I wondered whether my attempt at changing the Constitution would end any differently than Alfonso's. I looked out the window as the noise of the city diminished and saw that we were already inside the palace complex. I wonder if at the end of this video I'll be like, Oh, why didn't I cut a deal with Tusk or Caranti or whatever? I've tried to do the right thing. The reason we have no money and are broke is because we've tried to keep doing the right thing. And I don't know, maybe if we would have had money, we could have bribed people to vote for this, but we, we never did. I picked the poorest starters. We started as a member of a poor family. The complex housed the buildings of all government branches in the center of Holsord. It was one of the biggest developments in Swordland. The Maroon Palace stood on a small hilltop surrounded by trees. We passed by the palace and entered the forest that separated it from the Grand National Assembly. We drove on a small road that wound through the forest. It was a warm day, so I rolled down the window. I could hear birds singing from the trees. Are you okay back there, sir? I'm just going to be straight with Serge. Normally I ask how he's doing. I'm just going to open up. He's been great. He might have saved my life. I'm stressed about today, Serge. I'm really worried. I'm sure it's going to work out fine, sir. How do you know that? You got, like, a gun you're gonna pull out on the assembly? Don't stress yourself. Serge made a left turn out of the forest and entered the vast garden area of the assembly. Did you know that Mr. Tarkin's soul came to Holsword this morning? Uh-oh. Why the fuck? Holsword left his pri- <laughs> Soul? Soul left his private island? That does not seem to bode well for what I'm trying to do. Oh, shit. Is it because I wanted to get rid of his immunity? I'll put it back if they pass the Constitution. I heard some politicians talking about it today. Apparently, this is the first time he's come to the city in the last five years. Yeah, it sounds pretty worrisome, Serge. I thought he left the mainland and lived on Duru Island, never to return to politics. But they were saying he might be here to exercise his member of honor rights for the first time. Wouldn't it be hilarious if he got to be the tie-breaking vote? Oh no, it wouldn't be! Because I want to get rid of his immunity! Oh, shit. Uh, that, that's troubling. Do you think he's here because of today's vote? No, he was bored. He was bored. He picked this day out of five years. A day where there's a vote that could affect him to show up. Yes, Serge, most likely he is. Um, I thank you for telling me, though. Well, I'm sure he will support you, sir. I'm pretty sure he's not going to support me, because I want to get rid of his immunity. I might have made a massive mistake on that. I, I doubt that. Serge drove inside the gates of the parkway and parked the car. I want to be like, Lucian, Lucian, where are you? Can we change the draft quickly? Can we get go talk to Sol and be like, Sol, will you support this if we leave you with your immunity? <laughs> Come on, bro. We have arrived, sir. Thank you, Serge, and uh, thank you for everything. 
Good luck with the vote, sir. My family and I are all behind you. I'm sure Swordland is as well. He hasn't looked at the polling data. <laughs> I'm not doing so hot. <laughs> I walked up the white stone stairs of the Grand National Assembly. The entrance looked like a temple gate from the classical era. Maybe I can go fight a Hydra. The Hydra of Toria Glory. Or is it Tori Gloria? Gloria Tori? Whatever her name is. The door opened to reveal vast corridors of wood and white stone. I joined the crowd of people who were walking slowly towards Parliamentary Hall. Suddenly I noticed Lucian emerge from the crowd of packed politicians in front of me. He looked relieved when he saw me. Oh, dude, we need to talk. We need to find a room and talk, Lucian, like right now. Uh, sir, there you are. Have you seen Vice President Vector? And he's nowhere to be found. I don't care where that idiot is. Lucien, we got a problem. I, 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 yeah, I just arrived here, Lucien. I don't know where he is. I hope Mr. Vector arrives soon. At any rate, how about yourself? Are you ready to finally face the assembly, sir? Uh, Lucien, I just heard something worrying from Serge. Could you kill Soul? <laughs> no, I mean, don't do it. Uh, we, we, we'll address that later on, sir. Come, we must go inside. Wait, Serge, that means you know what's going on. We followed the crowd into the parliamentary hall. After we were inside, Lucy and I separated to take our assigned seats. I went up to the mezzanine overlooking the hall and sat down. Oh shit, that's right. I'm not a part of the legislature anymore. I'm the executive. I'm just here to watch. Please call me down to talk. I'll say all kinds of nice things about Seoul to get this damn thing passed. I waited as the MPs took their places inside the hall one by one. After a while, I saw that bitch, Gloria, walk to her elevated seat at the center of the hall. The ladies and gentlemen, uh, please take your seats. We will shortly begin with today's agenda of the USP's proposed changes to the Constitution of Sodland. It already passed! It already passed! Please be quiet up there. Shit, it didn't work. After a short while, everybody was in their seats. According to the current constitution, constitutional amendments require a two-thirds majority in order to reach assembly approval. Well, we're toast. It's done. Let's just leave now. I thought it was a simple majority. It's time for armed revolution. If the vote succeeds, the proposal will be sent to the Supreme Court. The proposal in question includes these points. She started reading the proposal to the assembly. Uh, first section uh, changes. Article 57 is modified with the following. Uh, free candy for everyone. That is not what it says. She continued reading the proposal, highlighting each section. Uh, section 2, paragraph 36. She went on. Uh, may not exercise his right to. And on. The Justices of the Supreme Court? The most of the MPs seemed like they were already falling asleep. Yes, fall asleep on the yes button. A simple majority is considered. The seat was really hurting my back. Oh my god, where's my lumbar, lumbar support? A section 4, paragraph 44A. Damn it, Lucien, you should have put some nudie pics in there to get them excited. It felt like an eternity had passed. Finally, she finished reading the changes. I hereby invite you all to vote. I don't think this is going to pass. We need a distraction. Lucian, can you get me an elephant from the zoo? Like now. And I need one of those kind of straw hats and a cane. I need a monorail song in this. I need to get everybody jazzed up about it. She struck her gavel down with a loud bang that made some MPs jump up in shock as they woke from their deep sleep. As I previously stated, it will require a two-thirds majority in order to pass. I don't know, can the NFP alone stop this? Hey, you may now cast your votes. Well, everybody, can I bet about, get, is, is it insider baseball? Am I going to get banned from baseball like Pete Rose if I vote against the chance of my own bill uh, going through? I felt the need to stand up and stretch. I looked down at the hall from the platform I was seated on. I should just jump to my death now. I failed! Oh! As some assembly members immediately walked to the ballot box to cast their votes. Most of them, however, began to congregate in groups around the hall discussing the changes. Oh? 
I could yell, I'm expecting your demotes, your votes. I could scream for democracy. I could keep watching. I'm gonna go down where the MPs are. This is my last chance to try and blow some dicks, shake some hands, and convince some people. As soon as I reached the bottom of the stairs, Kasaro Kimna approached me. Hey, Mr. President, uh, how are you feeling about the vote? I hope you voted yes, my friend. Oh, good friend, good friend. Remember when you fucked me on the, the mayor of Bergia thing or governor? I totally could forget that if you voted for me. You know I can't do that. We've already stated our decision. I've lost my respect for you, Mr. Rain. So many problems in Sorlin that must be addressed, and yet you insist on stalling us with your democratic reforms. I know you will fail. You will lose the game, and so will your entire administration. I hope to be there when it happens. Keep hoping, Mr. Kibna. Keep hoping. I remember faces that have weak little bitch-ass mustaches. That's all I can say. He laughed. <laughs> he abruptly turned away from me and walked towards his seat. Then I saw Lucian waving at me. He was among a group of people in the corner of the hall. I walked up to him. On my way, I bumped into Monsoon Leaky. Okay, I need to talk to this guy. He's in charge of the independence. They only got like 10 fucking votes, but we need every vote we can get. Mr. President, I'm sorry I didn't see you there. I wish you good luck with the vote. Man, you gonna vote for me? Today's a big day for you after all. I hope I have your support, Mr. Leakey. I believe in you and whatever you stand for. Most of the independents will be voting yes, Mr. President. Yeah! Mansu Leakey! 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 And I don't have to I don't have to pee, that's not what's going on. Even though we feel it doesn't address the issues we care about the most, it's a step in the right direction. Thank you! I get it, it's not you're right, Leakey. It's not perfect, but it's a massive step forward. You demand, but I have to say we were disappointed when we first read the proposal. Why? Um, I'm sorry it disappointed you, Leaky. We tried. Oh, I hope you don't ignore Blutish rights as well, Mr. President. Dude, I've been fighting for Blutish rights. I gotta cast my vote. You do it. Vote like... Dude, like if you vote 200 times, we can win. They might suspect something when they have 200 or 199 more, more votes than they need. But that's a problem for another day. He shook my hand and walked away. I finally reached Lucian. By now deep in conversation with another member of our party, he excused ourselves or himself and turned towards me. No, Lucian. Lucian, we've got to get our own party on board. Uh, sir, did you vote yet? We have to be quick. I get a vote? I'm, I'm the chief executive. Uh, what's the rush, Lucian? I'll explain on the way. I signed my vote and prepared the envelope. Together, Lucian and I walked to the center of the hall to cast our votes. He kept rushing me through the process. Lucian, do you have some sort of shitty maneuver to close the voting early? Gloria bowed her head slightly in respect as she saw us vote. Lucian pulled on my arm and whispered in my ear, Mr. President, we may have a problem. Tarkin Soul is here. That's what I was talking about in the hallway. Did you think I meant something else? That's what I meant. I know. I know he's here. Serge told me. We have to accelerate the voting process. We need everyone to vote as soon as possible. Lucian, we're probably losing this vote. Uh, maybe Sol being here will help us if people see that he's trying to be a dictator again. Uh, we don't know what he's capable of right now, but if assembly members see him, he might influence them against the proposal. Should I talk to him? I don't think it's going to work because of... I don't think he's going to like what we're doing. I would advise against that right now. The assembly must focus on the vote. Any confrontation between the two of you would draw their attention away. Maybe that's what we need to do. We'd run out the clock. Make sure we, 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 we keep all the conservatives busy. What if I yell that I believe in evolution? <laughs> what if I just yell that over and over again? Maybe they'll come yell at me? I don't know. I'm not going to shout at the assembly from the center of the hall. Um, asking Gloria to speed up the voting is not going to help us. She doesn't like us. You know what, Lucian? You're risking everything here. I think we should sit down, shut up, and let the process happen. But you have never steered me wrong. Ever. And you're the only one that's not an imbecile in my administration. Uh, you, what about yourself, sir? 
Like I said, you're the only one who's not an imbecile. <laughs> Let, uh, let's go ask Gloria to speed up the voting. I, I don't think we have a good chance here. But if we shout ourselves, um, she's the speaker. We need to honor what she has to say. I walked to Gloria and asked her to speed this up. Hey, chick, can you move this along? I, I can't do that, Mr. President. Don't worry, there's already a time limit, and we are abiding by the rules. Assembly members are used to this process. Lucian, you made me look like an idiot! Suddenly, Lucian pulled me aside. Sir, what do we do? He pointed at the back of the assembly, near one of the exits. I followed his finger to see Tarkin Soul sitting there. He looked much older than he had five years ago, but I could tell that he had the same fire in him. Some LPs, MPs had already gathered around him and were chattering in awe. The assembly gradually went quiet as people started to notice Soul's presence in the hall. I'm gonna go talk to him. My only... This is my move, and I don't think it's gonna work. Is my move is gonna go up there and be the nicest, most politest, most soul-loving motherfucker there ever been, right? Because the people who aren't sure of us are the soulists. Some of them are conservatives, you know, like the NFP or like Toria. She loves soul. Well, if I go up there and say, hey, look how much I love soul. Now, it might not work because we're trying to get rid of soul's immunity. Soul might just tell me to fuck off, but fuck it. I'm going to go talk to him. Uh, we should refrain from giving him the spotlight he expects. Maybe you can address him after the vote. Lucian, I get it, you think I'm an idiot. But as I was talking to Lucian, I spotted Kisaro Kibna walking to the back of the hall towards Tarkin's soul. He bowed in front of soul and gave him a military salute. Seeing this, more people started to approach him. Suddenly, Gloria came up behind us. Gentlemen, why don't you go back to your seats? Let's follow the procedure. Oh, by the way, we have 251 members here today. As you can see, the Member of Honor is here. He has already cast his vote. Uh, has he now? So, Ms. Sistory, how many votes are missing? Only a few. Elbin Clavin and three other men approached us with envelopes. What are you doing, motherfucker? Elbin Clavin, you're supposed to be on my side. You're the reformist part, part of our party. What are you doing? It is not the day for a picnic. I have been over backwards for things you could never ever dream of getting on your own! And you're out there dicking around! Get your envelope in. Elvin Clavin and three other men approached us with envelopes in their hands. And these must be the- They're literally the last people! So trying to move things along would have only hurt us because of these dumb fucks! Don't tell Clay Clavin wants to be in my administration. Oh, good day to you gentlemen and Madam Speaker! What took you so long? Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. President, we had an issue with one vote at the last minute. I've collected them now. Good, good. Do whatever you need to get those votes. You demand, Clavin. I'm not so mad at you now for fucking it up. He gestured at the man behind him. Let's get this over with, gentlemen. They went ahead and cast their votes. Good job. You gotta whip that vote. Let's win this, Mr. President! Yeah. He walked to his seat with a fist in the air. Few fists that air. And now, why don't you two get back to your seats as well? All right, Gloria Tory. Uh, very well, we shall. We both went back to our seats. When I returned back to the mezzanine, I saw Peter sitting in the chair. Peter, did you vote? You get a vote, I think. Get your dumb motherfucking idiot ass to vote. Did you cast your vote? Uh, yeah, of course. He looked at Gloria as she and her assistants counted the votes. The speaker's seat was only a few meters away from our platform. I really hope this proposal goes through. What's the over-under on it? <laughs> I, I don't think it looked good. Soul is here. What? 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 Uh, he's at the back of the hall. Take a look. Ah, fuck. Yeah, I really... Really, if we lose by one vote, I'm so going to regret trying to get rid of his immunity. He tried to get Gloria's attention by waving at her. How, how many votes left? Gloria looked at Peter. She looked annoyed. 117 eyes. 50 more votes to count. I don't... Do, do we even have a chance then? How many do we need? That would help if I knew that. Peter turned to me. 
I don't want 50 votes to count. We still need 49 more eyes. eyes. Eh, shit. Yeah, I know. It don't look good, does it, bro? It doesn't look good. I knew it didn't look good. Ah. Uh, I could say, okay, there's hope. We're going to get this. Just shut up, Peter. Nah. <laughs> shit. My response is, ah, shit. Peter looked uneasy. Peter pointed at where, where Friends Richter was sitting. And look at Friends over there. I'm sure he was behind this mess. You shouldn't have trusted him. I'm not going to say you were right. I knew I couldn't trust him. You know what, Peter? It's not over yet. Don't jump to conclusions. If we find out he betrayed us, then I don't think there's anything we can do. We're, we're probably going to lose the general election, and we're going to be living in boxes. But right now, it's not over yet, Peter. Don't jump to conclusions. I know, I know, we have to get 49 of the last 50 votes. That's pretty much impossible. I just gotta hope Clavin and his allies all were the last 50 votes. Um, well... A simple bang from Glorious Gavel reverberated across the hall. Everyone fell silent. The voting has concluded... I lean forward to hear the result. Why would I lean forward? I'm gonna put my head in my hands. <laughs> the groan of maybe victory. Uh, the proposal has 122 eyes and 129 nays. It did not even reach the number of signatures that supported it. All right, we might have got betrayed. It should have at least done that. If it needed 150 signatures and it got that to get on the ball, uh, to get represented here, somebody stabbed us in the back. Thereby, the Grand National Assembly has decisively rejected the changes to the Constitution. The Assembly was roaring with all kinds of different reactions. Well, so what job do you want to get next, Peter? I'm thinking of getting a paper route. I felt destroyed. I lowered my head and closed my eyes for a second. Oh, God, I'm sorry. It's okay, Peter. We'll find another plan. The MPs kept shouting in the hall. Among them, I heard Friends Richter's voice. I blame the president for this result. He and his party's weak attitude towards real tra change doomed him from the start. Real change? Motherfucker, I asked for more in this constitution than anybody else. It's the fact that I wanted so much change is why it didn't work. He's just like his predecessors, enjoying the privilege of the presidency while ignoring the responsibilities that comes with it. It's time to realize that the real change will only come from real reformists. The People's Freedom and Justice Party will keep leading this movement. The reformist MP started applauding him. Suddenly I noticed Tarkin's soul slowly rising from his seat at the back. He seemed to be struggling and used his cane for help. He stood and gazed around the hall as all of the members of the Grand National Assembly went silent. I'm going to call out to him. I've got nothing to lose. My next job is Paperboy. I'm gonna say hey to Soul. Why the fuck not? Maybe he'll let me get a job on his island. So I can say, welcome Mr. Soul. Former President Soul, nice of you to join us. Or I could like totally kiss his ass. It is so tempting to do that right now with the way the Pifjas have just tried to stab us in the back politically. You know what though? We have nothing to lose one way or the other. Former President Sol, nice of you to join us. He looked at me. Give the title you hold the respect it deserves, Mr. President. He turned his back and walked out the exit as two of his guards held the doors open for him. Uh, what the hell was that? Sol or no Sol, we're definitely fucked. Neither the party nor the public is going to be pleased. I could say we can't change the Constitution. So what? We're in charge, nope. I could yell, damn it. I could tell Peter to shut up. No. Screw soul. Screw the party. We were always on our own. The party should have had our back here. We were trying to save them for the future. If they do not change the nation, they cannot continue to rule with only a third of the popular support. Sooner or later, there will be a civil war or another revolution that will tear this country apart because the powerful idiots in charge in our own party refuse to adapt and change. So fuck them. And you're right. You so you think we can still survive this? No. <laughs> you 
You know what? If the USP abandons us, we'll form our own party. Why not? Who cares? As we're delivering newspapers, he looked at me with surprise. I'll follow you anywhere, Anton. We both looked at the floor for a while. We could call it the loser party. After we gathered our thoughts, Peter and I walked out of the assembly hall. We waited for Surge by the entrance. Well, that was a disaster and a half. Should I read the news? Might as well. Assembly voted against constitutional changes. The Grand National Assembly of Sorland on Friday rejected the amendments to the Constitution that was proposed by the United Sorland Party. I officially announced the rejection of the constitutional amendments, said Speaker Gloria Torre, after the proposal was, re was rejected. What if I joined the Pifja party and put Friends Richter out of a job? According to Torre, 122 lawmakers voted in favor of the amendments, failing to reach the 166th threshold. Only one, e one member of the assembly abstained from voting in the session, attended by the 251 members of the 250-seat parliament, including President Rain and Member of Honor Tarkin Soul. The proposal didn't even get votes from the 150 people who signed it in the first place, said Tory, after the, the results. See, somebody, and I can't guarantee it was Friends Richter. Somebody fucked us, right? So that means there were 28 people who, who signed on for this to get before the government, but then did not vote for it. Swordland today, Constitution failed. Swordland today. Changes to the Constitution f failed. Once again, Anton Rain proved himself a sad and ineffectual excuse for a president. Yeah, I know, we failed. Even Target Soul made a rare appearance in Holesword to show his disapproval, cementing Rain's defeat. We tried to fly too high on wings of wax, and the Radical, I'm sure, will shit on us. Constitutional proposal rejected by the Assembly. Count us unsurprised. Thanks to the heavy opposition and a special appearance from old man Target Soul himself, President Rain could have managed to get his constitutional reforms past the Assembly. We've been advocating for change to Soul's dusty constitution for ages. Though it's doubtful that the changes Rain was advocating were the same as those we had in mind. Still, the failure is discouraging, with Rain's reforms in the wastebasket and his reputation similarly trashed. Nobody else is likely to try changing the Constitution for years to come. That's why Fritz Richter should have shut the fuck up. We did everything we could. That's so interesting, though, that 28 people could have voted. They signed the document to get it on the ballot. And then they abandoned us. Who did that? Will it even matter? As we'll soon be delivering papers in our suits on our little bicycles? I don't know. We'll find out next time when we deal with a meeting on the results of the assembly. I, I don't know what the meeting could be. It sucked. <laughs> we got whomped. Uh, see you around.